I was more in control of where I wanted to take my sound and stuff like that. So I've always just been aiming at like global. I've always like since the beginning of my career, from when I was nine years old, I always just saw myself as a global artist. You know what I mean? So mm. when when those opportunities started to fall like right in front of me, I didn't I didn't think about it. I just grabbed it. Killer Killer oh, 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 podcast. Killer Killer official dot com. <laughs> THTC, the UK's leading ethical streetwear label. Organically grown and ethically built garments from hemp, organic cotton and other sustainable materials. 2019 is their 20th anniversary year. Join me with THTC as a Killer Keller podcast sponsor celebrating music, social activism, hemp and street culture. THTC, eco-fashion redefined since 1999. Talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. People, this is Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, as central as you need to be. And through the appliance of science, we're doing this on Zoom. Big shout out to Graffiti Kings. Hold tight, the man, South Africa's finest, nasty sea inside the place. What's good, brother? You know, my dear. <laughs> Where the hell are you in the world, brother? I'm in South Africa. I'm about to catch a flight. I'm going back home. I took a little. Uh, it was three days vacation. And you're heading back home right now, huh? Yep, my flight's in like an hour. So you're fl- hold on, so your flight, where are you at the moment then? I'm in Cape Town right now, going back to Joburg. Gotcha. What have yeah. you been doing? You've been filming movies? You've been, do- I mean, the, the, the breadth of your, yeah. your career right now. You could be doing anything right now, brother. No, nah, I was just chilling. I really was just chilling. Just taking a break, man. <laughs> well, as an artist, right, and I'm sure you can recognize this, when, when we say chilling, this is like the, the highest point of your like creative. You suddenly, you can become creative without thinking too much. That's the, that's the craziest shit. What happens is when, when you have that space in your head, all of a sudden the world starts filling up again. And next thing you've got yourself like a whole heap of ideas just by not doing anything. Exactly. And then, and then you find yourself back at work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Next thing you're making work again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you're not, you're no, you're, you're no uh, short on like... Uh, content and creating and making you know situations you know creative and unbelievable for yourself tell us tell us about the background on the new album brother this this i've got so many topics within this to talk to you about tell us about the process of that um like the making of the album yeah so pretty much it was like I, i started working on the album before i even dropped my previous album so this album's been like it's been in the making for about a year and some change Mm-hmm. And I don't uh, like for the first for the first couple of songs, maybe first forty percent of the album, I didn't really know what direction to take. Like I didn't really have like a specific direction. I was just like winking it, just like stacking up on joints. And then I had like a conversation with No ID, and we spoke just a lot about music, culture, um, crossing over with your culture, and just like carrying it on your back. You know what I mean? And and he made mm-hmm. a lot of examples. And one of them that stuck out was um, an example he made about Snoop and how <clears throat> he made it cool to rock braids in New York and, and wear colors and ride bikes in New York where it was just like predominantly all black outfits and Tims and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like he took that culture and made it like a cool thing to adopt, even if you're from, do you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and that really that really struck a chord in me, man. And I wanted And I wanted to do something similar with the album. I wanted to kind of like carry my culture on my back type thing. Do you know what I mean? Like make sure whoever's hearing about me, whether it's in the UK, the US or in Asia, when they hear about my album, immediately they know, oh, this guy's Zulu. He must be from Africa. He must be from South Africa. You know what I mean? And then and then they'll start doing their own research over there and hopefully embrace the culture. Yeah, man. Listen, no ideas of bad, man. And I, I tell you what, using references like that, you know, the Snoop references, uh, uh, that that golden era of hip hop. You know, I, I grew up in that. And you're right. There was there was certainly a cross pollination of styles. And in this day and age where technology reigns supreme, it's awesome that we get a translated version through your eyes, your culture yeah. internationally. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I think it's very important, man. It's important. We're at an age right now where people just want to learn so much about everybody else. And that's that's a good thing. Like, we all want to feel connected somehow. So you, that's why you got you got this. What's that thing called again? 
uh, Ancestry.com or something like that, where people try oh to trace God, their lineage. Oh my God, you said it. For real. Do you, know, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, stuff like that. So this is the perfect time for that type of stuff. Do you think some of it, do you think some of it is, is technology falling into line? Like, even with grime music over here in the UK or drill music uh, across the West, it's like, it's very much to do with a similar type of snare and a t- similar type of kick. This, this, these, these sounds as, as, uh, as a sound palette are available everywhere. Do you think that's sort of helped, uh, help the culture in a way, allowing you to kind of take elements that people are newly familiar with and reprocessing them. So they still have a similar alignment to, mm-hmm. to what's going on in the charts or what's going on in the cars and in the hoods but being able to do it in your way but using those you know what i'm saying yeah i think i think it is though i mean obviously as like some of them make it look like they just bit the sound and they just took it and ran with it because it was trendy mm-hmm. but like a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of the times people get it right and it's just it just it's, it's just a beautiful thing to watch it's just like with that with that drill sound right now that's going on. The first time I ever heard that was in the UK, and I always just thought it was a UK thing. And then when they started doing it in New York, it was like, oh snap! Like this, yeah. this is really dope. You know what I mean? And 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 it was like it was cool, man. It's it's just so cool to see different cultures just like embrace each other like that, bro. It's just beautiful to watch, bro. For real. And you know what's so dope about it is, of course you know drill. Of course we now mm-hmm. know your side of the pond. You know, it's like their world has become so much more smaller. Like ages are yeah. boundless. You know, there's there's no age to this thing now. There's no, there's it's it's <clears throat> we gotta play catch up to technology a lot of the times, right? Yeah, yeah. True. Like check it out right now. We're in Zoom, baby. <laughs> you, you can be anywhere, <laughs> man. I love it. It's working fire. Um it's crazy. It made the world small, bro. It made it so that's small. That's that's the new rule. Um Going back a little bit, you know, you started at a really uh, young age. You, you know, your your brother, right, was a, a big influence to you. Um, yes. it spurred you on. Then you, you, then you had these releases, like a bunch of mixtapes, and we include like you know people like DJ Cat, um, Who Kid, and people like that. And I'm like, yo, like, I, I mean, I remember seeing you in in the school doing the 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 rapping and freestyling. You know what I mean, like. How yeah. did you make that transition from the school to to well, essentially your first couple of mixtapes? How did that happen? Um, <clears throat> because because I always recorded myself, and like I was always my own engineer and stuff like that. I was always in control of my sound and and mm. what I wanted to sound like and who I wanted to work with and stuff like that. So I guess that just made that just made everything easier. That that just I was more in control of where I wanted to take my sound and stuff like that. So I've always just been aiming at like global. I've always like since the beginning of my career and when I was nine years old, I always just saw myself as a global artist. You know what I mean? So mm. when, when those opportunities started to fall, like right in front of me, I didn't, I didn't think about it. I just grabbed them. Like when I met who kid, I met him on zoom. Actually, isn't that crazy? I met him on zoom. So he was like, he was like, yeah, I'll focus your <laughs> well, music. I, and I, was I, met, like, yeah. I met who kid back in the day when he was with 50, they came to UK. I mean, yeah. a, a lot of international acts come to the UK. They do it. You sound like you've been to the UK yourself a few times. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. How yeah, long? How, yeah. lo- how long? How you been? How many times you been out here? <clears throat> About four times, four or five times. Ooh, shit. Yeah, Good a night. couple times. Yeah, couple times. See, it's yeah. that international shit, right? And and you're telling yeah. me then that you you engineered majority uh, those early doors. You were really behind the boards like that. You were overseeing everything yeah. you were doing. Up until now, up until today, I record everything at home. I don't care if it's a feature album. I don't like. I record everything at home myself that's fucking sick because you know what even listening to the more recent stuff the new album that yo you know what i really respect out of all of it brother is there's some respites on that album where you're sending him a musical message you're sending him i mean we talk about snoop dogg but there's some real instrumentation going on there there's some real it ain't it ain't all like falling in line to what's going on now. There's a lot of things that are going on that, A, I don't think would ever be recreated by someone from this side of the world because they're too immersed in the, the, the pop culture of it all um, and mm-hmm. what's on trend and what's on brand. But furthermore, because you're, because you're coming from South Africa, you, 
you, you're using instrumentations and, and voices, vocals in a particular way. I've got a lot of time for that, man. It was, it was sick. Exactly. Yeah, that was the whole point, man. That was the whole point. Like, it just, it had to tie back to something. Like, I, I would, like, see how you guys had it right. You guys mastered it. You guys did it twice, even. It wasn't even just the, the, this wave with the drill stuff that, that went on. First, it was the, the drill wave that Drake caught on. Remember when Drake caught on to it, like, a couple years ago? And when he, yeah. like, brought it to, like, the whole world? Yeah, 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 I was trying to do something like that. Like, I was trying to find a slick way to do it like that. I think that's everybody's yeah. big ambition. I mean, I remember... Oh God! I mean, we're not ju- not just talking about myself, but loads of people in music. That one of their biggest goals is to find a defining s- anybody that's got integrity is yeah, like to try exactly. and find a defining sound, isn't it? Exactly, exactly, exactly. That's how you. Sometimes stand that can be a little lost when you, you know you have a whole team around you trying to steer you left and right. So the fa- it doesn't surprise me by the sound of it that you had your own you had your own thoughts and you were dealing with it by yourself because you wouldn't get an outcome mm-hmm. like that that you have, you know. Yeah, with everybody else's input, you guys are just going in different directions. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah what, what, um, what UK guys are you feeling at the moment? What, uh, who are you fucking with over here at the moment? Right now, Doug. Yeah. Right now, Octavian is my guy, bro. Like, oh Octavian, my god, he's so fire, bro, bro. He's so sick. And every time <laughs> I hear something new by him, it's always so different from like the past shit. It's like, it's crazy, bro. That's the, the guy, guy I want to work with me, right bro. now. Definitely, yeah, definitely he kills me. Yeah, I'll tell you. He's always um, I've got, a, I've got a new act. Um, I, I reckon you'd really dig. Um, mm-hmm. They're like a kind of. They're on that more like late nineties R and B tip, or rather the mid noughties You know, two thousand eight, two thousand and nine R and B tip. They're called they T H E Y. I know them. I know them. Oh, I fuck with them I so hard. They're from the UK. So they're they from the UK. Do you know the Do you know the the new joint? Um, uh, count me in. No, I don't know that one. Are those uh, guys from the UK? No, they're from nah, they're from they're from the US. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought you meant, I thought you were saying they were from the UK. I was like, no. what? That's crazy. Yeah, I think you'd yeah, but I, fuck them. I fuck with them though. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah, I think you'd fuck with them. I like the I like the way they do their videos too. Yeah, for real. It's like real abstract. I like that. Is is there like a drill scene? In, in South Africa, I mean, I think the, the political and social climate is like hella different. <laughs> I mean, there is, but it's not that much of a wave, though. It's like people are really, uh, I think they're scared to, to mess with it because it might just come off as them just riding a wave. Mm. Oh, I mean? And I think it's oh, too yeah. late. It's too late for them to try and jump on it now. Like, they should just let it ride. Bro. Like, yeah, I feel that. Sometimes you've got to yeah. be on the, the right wave. Yeah, you gotta be like halfway. Yeah. You gotta be ready to jump on the board, kind of wave. Sometimes, sometimes you should just let it ride, man. Sometimes it's not yours. Sometimes it's chill. It's like, you know what I mean? Do you believe that? Uh, do you, you believe in that? Do you believe in that? Like following that path and being intuitive to when the time is right to jump on that board. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! If it doesn't feel right, don't do it. That's yeah. a mistake. Don't do it. You can feel the resistance sometimes when something doesn't feel right. Yeah, but some some exactly. people choose to ignore it, right? Yeah, because they just focus on what could be the outcome, like the potential outcome, not even like a guaranteed outcome. They just think, yeah. oh, this might happen, this might happen. Yeah, that's, that's just doing your whole business blindly. You shouldn't do that. That's bad for you. You know, the biggest example of that, which I've never really ever, ever understood is like American mm. Idol. You know, when they have the auditions and someone walks into that room and can't sing for shit. <laughs> <laughs> All of their family have been telling them up till then that they were great. <laughs> nah, I think those I think the, I think those people, one, either are just trolling or two, I think the show gets those people just to make it interesting. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah, it has to be. It makes no sense. Some of them are just terrible. Like the wooden mic stuff. That's like, it's unbelievable that somebody that sounds like that could think that they have a shot. Like, that's Gets crazy. Gets them into that state to nah, the point that it's nah. okay. They better be being paid for that shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I think. For real. Definitely. How uh, how often do you tour um, South Africa? Look, because I'm, you know, being the UK over here, like, I really want to get under the under the car of, like, of, of, of how... Um, how big your presence is in um, mm-hmm. in your hometown and in in your country, and because you know obviously you're an international artist, you're going global. 
But it all starts at home, right? It all begins exactly. at the first territory. I I have a tour that I do every year. It's called the Ivy Cell Tour. Um, and actually, it's like it's the first actual tour like from a South African artist, like hip hop artist even. <sighs> um, like, we, yeah, we don't really tour here. When artists, when artists say they tour here, because it's just like, I guess numbers, like our population is so, like, the hip hop crowd is such a diluted, filtered, very narrow version mm. of like the people that we have in South Africa. We don't even have like that many, it's just 50 million. And then it's like cut down to like, okay, how many of those people actually speak English and can actually understand your music? How many of them can afford to even buy a ticket or stream your music? How many of them can make it to where you are? Like, that that feels safe in that environment or whatever. Do you know what I mean? It's like all those things come into play, man. It's just so so when when people tour here, usually what they do traditionally, they just go like to to, to different clubs in the city. So they go to Durban, do like five clubs. Go to Joburg, do like a couple clubs and whatever. I do an actual tour where I do like um fields and and and, and like stuff like that. Like I do like uh these little arenas at like four or five thousand capacity, whatever. I do that every single year. It's like, yeah, I, yeah, I do that just to like, um, not only just like to tour because I just want to tour and do my own shows, but at those shows, I find like those crowds are like the best because those are the people that obviously, one, understand English, understand every word of my music mm -hmm. and are there because they can afford to be there and because they can make their way back home. So there's no like safety scares and nothing like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you... Do you feel like the weight's on your shoulders with that? Because listen, I know of a, I know of a South African hip hop culture, a rap culture, um, and mm -hmm. it's not like you, you guys. It's not like you're coming into the culture late. Because I remember there being b boys. I remember being graffiti writers. I remember being DJs, rappers. You know what I mean? It just felt though. If and correct me if I'm wrong, is it kind of stayed like that even when? rap in in america was progressing there was this it kind of kept its its cultural lane you must have like the sh world on his shoulders right now because you really are taking your scene by the hand and you're taking it sounds yeah. to me like you're taking a lot of the hits from trying to work out and navigate these sorts of dilemmas right right so i have to be like the guinea pig yeah do you know what i mean yeah, but, it, exactly it, it, but it comes with it. It comes with it. Like, I understand that. You know what I mean? I'm not one of those guys who, who's, like, mad at that and who just wants things to be easy. I understand that. I understand that all the work we're putting in right now, we're putting it in so that the next guy who comes up and is the next big thing is going to have to do, what, half of the work or, like, a quarter of yeah. it. Yeah. And he's going to be able to do it at, like, a higher magnitude. That's the way it's always been. Same with AKA. He was, a, he was like, the guy that that made commercial, um, like, hip-hop a thing in the essay, like, where you're rapping in English and it sounds like like worldly music and not just, like, South African local mm. music. Yeah, and he had to he had to go through the struggles of that. He, he's the one that had to keep the torch up no matter what. You know what I mean? And because yeah. of him, we have it way easier than him. And now all the shit that I'm doing and, and all these fucking walls that I have to break down so that the next and then the next and then the next that's how that's how the game goes bro that's, that's for real i've got nothing but like yeah you know pure respect for that uh you must have like a you must have like a team operator per, per um department of shit that might go down you know you must yeah, have the yeah. shit that might go down department first of all then you've got yeah. the people within yeah. the department <laughs> <laughs> yeah i have all those people in place <laughs> <laughs> what's it like to I mean essentially you are creating your own festival at these things so what's it like putting like you say having 5,000 people that all fit the, the the target demographic of what you're going for but then they bring their friends and next thing you've got five, 6,000 people what's it like putting on your own event it's dope bro it's, it's the best feeling ever bro it's like the people that are there those are the people you're speaking to every time you get behind that mic anyways do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And those people are all there. Those are the people that understand every single emotion that you put into those lines. When they sing the lines back at you, they're crying. Versus like these other shows when you go to them. And it's dope. It's dope performing at the other shows. But most of the time you find 40% of the crowd doesn't even know who you are. 
the 60 percent mm. that knows you is not really the biggest fan like they're, they're not the biggest fans of yours they mm. just know the music so they're like they know the hook and then when it comes to the verse you lose them like they just they just look at you and yeah. then when the hook comes back on then they turn up but when it's your own shows that shit goes from from the intro, from like the first couple ad libs you do. Yeah. They they doing that with you. All the AAAs, they doing that with you, bro. Like until yeah. the end of the song. You know what I mean? The, That's just like what keeps you going, right? Nothing can compare. Yeah, hell yeah. Hell do yeah. Do you um do you fo- would it would it would it be an argument that you know when you do a support tour? I don't know, say say for instance. T.I. hits you up and he's like, yo, come and do my tour. I'm coming to South Africa. Or I'm, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm coming in the surrounding areas. And you mm-hmm. you jump on his shows. Now, is there more of an, an, an attack on that of like show improving a lot more and you want to, I don't know, be on your P's and Q's, but you also want to serve it to him fucking hard because you want to make that impact. That must, is that more a, of an energizing experience than perhaps when you know you've already got the crap, you know they're coming to see you and you know you got them in the palm? Like, you mean like at, if, if T.I. came to do a show and, and put me on his show? Yeah, yeah. Like, you had to really show and prove to his audience what the fuck you're about. Is that more energizing for nah, you? Nah, it would, nah, it, yeah, it would, it, it, it would be a dope little moment, but it would be like, yo, I know these people came to see you, but watch this type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be like one of those moments. It was like, yo, that I know they're was- here for you. I, that shit it feels dope. It feels dope. Yeah. Yeah, it is, bro. It feels, yeah, it feels dope. Black did that for me, actually, when he was here in Joburg. He put me on stage, and it was like, it was crazy. It was oh, crazy. That's sick. Sometimes you need those... Shout um, out to him, man. Yeah, for real, shout outs. I mean, you really do need those from time to time, don't you? Just to kind of remind you, yeah. you know, what you're doing it for. It's like a whole new whole new audience, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And And just like, that cosign or that little moment is just, I don't know, it means something to everybody involved. It means something to the artist. It means something to the artist that's, that's getting their favor. It means something to, to the people of that country. Mm-hmm. Like, if, if you're coming from another country, those people are going to look at you a different way and be like, all right, you put one of us on and you showed us some respect and you showed us some love. All right, cool. We fuck with you forever. Whenever you're coming back with it, like, you know yeah. I mean? it's, yeah. it's awesome. And you've worked with a whole heap of different people. I mean, like T.I. was just an example, but I know you've, you've, you've fucked with him as well um, with the Black mm-hmm. Lives Matter movement. And yep. And you know what's really dope is when I heard that tune, I, you could vibe that, you know, there is, there's an, obviously like there's a demographic that, that, that you, you're reaching out to, but he, T.I., it felt like T.I. was taking cues from you in a, in a way. His flow was a little bit flipped up. It felt like he, mm-hmm. you guys were definitely gunning for a particular kind of tone and a vibe. And between the two of you, I just, I just thought that was dope. It felt like every, both of you were in the same room. You know what I mean? We weren't. Like, I made that song a whole, like a year ago. Damn. 2019 June is when I made that song. Isn't that crazy? That's mad. Yeah. That's mad. What, so what was it like working with T.I.? I mean, was, it, was it on grid? Did you do it on Zoom or...? Um, yeah, we had a couple, we had a couple, I think the first time we spoke, spoke like on the phone phone, uh, I think it was Zoom, but before that we were just texting. Um, every time I try to call him, like he was either on a flight or he, he tried to call me and I was on a flight or I was asleep. It was like the time difference. Um, so I don't know like what you're Zoom, talking about. I, I do not know what you're talking about, mate. I, I, I can't imagine you being anywhere else but in the studio. Not like this. No way. <laughs> <laughs> not yeah, catching so a flight. Was, nah. <laughs> so it was like so it was like um emails, DM, text, and Zoom. Pretty much, yeah. And it came out the way it did. Did you did you uh engineer that? Did you uh because obviously you'd had the, the track yeah. already? Yeah, I engineered my parts and then um his guys did his parts. Okay. And then what they, yeah. they fixed it up and finished it up um in the US? No, they sent me his parts and then I placed them on on a song and rearranged um I thought it fit. That's got. That's got to give you some clout. That's got to give you some like, like you, for you to be given the parts and be like, yeah, hey, you know what? Highly qualified. Go and jump on that. Mix it for us. Thanks. How cold's that? <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty dope, man. It feels good to be in control like that, though. I'm not gonna lie. I would have been gassed. I'd have been like, hey, I've just gonna bag myself some acapellas right here, and I'm gonna do a mix. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. But but you know how dope that is, though. 
Like with with ASAP Ferg when we did King, yeah. that verse that he sent me was meant for another beat. And then I yeah. heard it and I was like, man, I was like, man, this is too slow. Like I don't know if, if it hits hits. And then I put it on another beat and it sounded crazy. See, if they didn't send me the steps, I wasn't gonna be able to do that. And we were gonna have to just like settle with the other one. You know what I mean? So what did, was it one of your other beats? You put you put it on another one of your beats? Yeah. Another another beat, a whole different song, whole different, same same content though. Like that's that's like, crazy. Yeah. What did he say when? What did he say when you sent it back to him and it was on a whole different thing? He fucked with it. Like he was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, at first it was like, "Yo," but I want people to hear like the lines. I want people to catch the bars. And I was like, "Trust me, they're gonna catch the bars." But you don't want you don't want you don't want there to be something that they're gonna listen to. And like, ah, this is dope, but oh, it's mm. too slow. You know what I mean? I was like, rather have them go, "Whoa!" I didn't know Ace of can rap that fast. Yeah. Mm. Did you send him? The, did you send him the idea first, or did you surprise him? I just sent that. I, I sent him uh, a video. I took a little oh, video like of the speaker while it was playing. I sent it to him on. on, on yeah, oh, that's so cold. That's so cold. Yeah. I mean, with each one of these step by steps. I mean, let's not take. <laughs> anything for granted here like your humble beginnings your development your progress this was all like it was it was textbook how to become a successful artist you, and sometimes you can't write that you can't script that you've just got to show up and be tenacious and just go for it right this isn't like a just figure it out yeah you have to figure it out is and that's yeah. something that I learn with every podcast, whoever's inside the, the, the arena, I'm like, everyone, nobody knows nothing, but everyone knows what they got to do. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's mm. like, you got to smash that's it. That's hard. You, you got to make hard. it. Go make it work. Yeah, that's hard. That's true. Have you ever had moments where you're like, yo, I mean, I I'm I'm need a bit of time to figure it. I mean, is this what this trip away's been for has it been for you to just like re-up no it, i was just trying to get some time away from everybody and everything that i was just like forced to face for a whole like year or, or whatever i just wanted to get away from like because Joburg is like the new york of of south africa for real it is huh yeah that's where like every everybody's just trying to hustle 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 that's where everybody's at so i just wanted to get away from that for a second yeah Cities, yeah. cities are designed that way, though, too, aren't they? The music industry is yeah. lawless and terrible, but but cities also, you've got this other, the second life of just basic survival, and then you've got the music industry, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, the engine. <laughs> they, they try and fuck. Crazy. That's the engine right there. Yeah. yeah. What are you gonna do? What's the future? What's the plans, my brother? What are you on? Um, right now, man, just pushing this album, really trying to get it to as many ears as possible. Um, putting out videos, dope content. I put out a documentary also. Um, there's a lot of features that I did with a lot of guys internationally that I'm about to start rolling out and stuff. Um, yeah. And then all the other stuff is a surprise for now, man, but I got a lot of tons of stuff coming up. That's so sick. Can't wait to hear it. Mm-hmm. Got a couple of questions for you. This is done by my live stream gang um, uh, on a Wednesday mm-hmm. that I do over here. And they got some questions for you. All right. All right. This is some quick fire business. Okay. So cool. Hold on to your hat. Right. As of last year, you were name brand ambassador for Axe Spray. What is a smell that others might find weird and you would like to have as a deodorant? Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that I would actually want as a deodorant? Nah, I don't <laughs> yeah, think I yeah, want as a yeah, deodorant. Yeah, that you would want as a deodorant. There's something weird, weird about, weirdly pleasing about the the smell of gas. Oh, he um, said it. It's so true, dude. Yeah, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. So, gas. You know that first injection of petrol in the tank? Yeah. That's yeah. the shit for real. That little whiff that you catch. So, yeah, that's just fine. I guess it would oh, be that. Okay. I can't think of anything else right now at the moment. You know, the other one is when that. people light a cigarette for the first time. I thought about that one, but then I was like, nah. Right now, uh, like I'm, I'm quitting cigarettes, so like I'm like two months clean right now, so oh, shit. I don't want to take my mind there. Have I kicked <laughs> off the craving? All right, let's re-up, re-up. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, you've had your fact first acting debut 
Blood and Water. Is acting something yeah. you want to pursue? And if so, which film, old or new, do um, you want to be a part of? Nah, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to do it anymore. I just kind of. I just wanted the experience. You know, I just wanted to know what it feels like to be an actor and and just like to be on screen and stuff. And I realized I'm not as invested in it as I am in music and other stuff. So I was like, nah. It's a different beast. There's a lot of waiting around in that, in yeah. that world. Yes. Yes. I feel like that should that should be a disclaimer that comes with it. It's like, do you want to be an actor? You're going to have to wait a lot. And always be on cue. Like whenever somebody else just goes, hey, come on. Uh, and then you have to remember lines. Oh, my God, bro. Yeah. Lines, man. Oh, my God. Uh, professional waiter. Uh, professional prof- a profession in patience. That's what filmmaking uh, uh, is, right? Nah, and stay away yeah. from the buffet area because you'll end up five <laughs> stone heavier. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get in trouble. Yeah. Right. Favorite song for the new album? Uh, at the moment, La Vida Loca. Ooh. Just because I'm in that mode right now. Yo, yeah. see, that's one of them respite tunes when I was like, bro, this guy's yeah. on some other <laughs> shit. Yeah. That's, I'm so glad you said that. Fucking sick. Um, all right. Uh, after watching... Um, 13 year old freestyling at high school. What advice would you give young people of that age trying to make it in the industry? Um, just to always go for what you want. Um, no matter what it is, like, really, like, break it down to the simplest points and, and really just go for what you want. Don't let people. Don't let people um, influence your idea of cool or success or whatever. And also just do everything at your own pace, man. I feel like that's, that's the one thing that causes a lot of artists to crash because they try and do it in other people's timing. They see this guy go number one. They go, oh, shit, now I have to do this sound or this and that. And that, that they shoot themselves in the foot by doing that. So, like, yeah, that's right. go at your own pace, have your own definition of success and whatever, and just do it at your own timing, man. Really. That shit's so important, for real. My brother, it's been a pleasure, pleasure chatting to you. You're a superstar and destined for some heavy, heavy things into the future. You're, you're a hero. Thank you very much, my man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Let me go catch this flight. Man, if I miss it. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast. You know we're doing it like this. Stay lucky. Big shout out to Nasty C. You know we got this. Rolling heavy with the punches. Again, big shout out to Graffiti Kings. Share, share, alike, sharing is caring. You know what it do. All right, stay lucky. Don't talk to any strangers. We are like in was out of fashion. Peace.